We at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives have long been tracking the growing problem of income inequality in Canada. It was our pleasure to be able to sit down with Richard Wilkinson, co-author of the book The Spirit Level, an international bestseller on income inequality. Here's our conversation. We looked at the rich market democracies um, and looked at the scale of income differences between them. And there are quite surprisingly large differences in how unequal they are. So, for instance, if you look at how much richer the top 20% are in each country than the bottom 20%, you find that in the most equal countries like Japan, Norway, Sweden, Finland, the top 20% are about three and a half, four times as rich as the bottom 20%. But in the most unequal countries, like uh, the USA, Portugal, Britain, the differences are twice as big. Uh, they're twice as unequal um, as the most equal of the developed countries. Canada is some, well, when we put our data together, we're somewhere around the middle. Um, I'm told that your income differences have been widening very fast um, and faster than other countries. And so your position is probably worsening. So what, what are the implications of this? Well, if you look at a whole raft of uh, health and social problems, typically the problems that are, are worst at the bottom of our societies in the most deprived areas, you find that all those kinds of problems are much worse in more unequal societies. Uh, I always forget the list, but uh, I look at physical health, um, uh, life expectancy, infant mortality, or mental illness. Uh, or levels of violence, or drug abuse, or measures of child well-being, or the proportion of the population in prison, or how co cohesive societies are, involvement in community life and measures of trust, all show that all those things deteriorate in more unequal societies. Inequality doesn't just affect the people at the bottom, it doesn't just affect the poorest. These differences are so large because the vast majority of us do less well in a more uh, unequal society. So you, what I mean by that is if we look at your level of education, your income, your occupational class, uh, you would perhaps, if you were in a more equal country, live a bit longer. Uh, you'd maybe less likely to be a victim of violence. Uh, your children might do a wee bit better at school in terms of these international maths and literacy scores that we've looked at. Uh, they'd be less likely to get involved in drugs. Uh, they'd um, be less likely to become teenage parents. So in that sense, we say that the vast majority of the population would do better in more equal societies. So we live in a time where in countries like Canada and in the US, um, the rise of the rich is revered. And in fact, we're often told uh, that we need the rich. We need the rich, we need to pursue economic growth. Uh, but you've, you've actually made an interesting observation about we may be entering a period of time where the ability to raise living standards by accumulation of material wealth may be over. Yes, I think that's very important. Uh, if you look at um, life expectancy in relation to economic growth, gross national income per person, you find it rises very fast in the early stages of economic development. So third world developing countries, they really need economic growth. But in the richer countries, that tails off. And that's because, you know, it's really important to have more when people haven't got the basic necessities. But for us in the rich world, to have more and more of everything makes less and less difference. And it's not only shown in looking at life expectancy, but also if you look at measures of happiness or well-being. Uh, they all improve fast in the early stages of economic development and then tail off. It's not simply that economic growth no longer produces the really important human benefits that's that we've got from it in the past, uh, but actually inequality isn't uh, good for growth. And we show that, for instance, social mobility is lower in more unequal societies. You can't get equality of opportunity in societies with very big, if you like, inequalities of outcome. The more unequal countries have less mobility. Um, we sometimes say if Americans want to live the American dream, they should go to countries like uh, Denmark and Finland where there's much higher social mobility. But also, I mean, there's a sense in which more unequal societies waste talent. It's not just that they have less social mobility, uh, but kids do less well at school. Their maths and literacy scores are lower. Um, but then, you know, if you've got ten times as many people in prison and you've got much more in the way of drug problems and so on, those are real burdens to a society. 
Um, and nobody can sensibly argue, and indeed the, uh, the research on the relationship between economic growth and inequality doesn't suggest that uh, greater equality is bad for growth. So when you look at the countries that, are, that do really well, that are more equal, what is it that they do? What is it that countries like Canada should be considering in terms of reducing well, income inequality? One of the most interesting things is there seem to be quite different strategies uh, for getting uh, greater equality. Some countries, like Sweden, do it with, they start off with very big earnings differences and then they redistribute with high taxes and benefits. But the other countries like Japan, which have smaller earnings differences before redistribution, before taxes, and so they have lower taxes, they have a smaller welfare state. Uh, we find rather the same contrast amongst the American states. You see, we did all this work twice. We did it amongst the rich developed countries, and then we looked in a test, separate test bed to see whether these relationships also held up there. And the picture is very similar. But in the American states, you find that the states like uh, New Hampshire uh, that have small differences in earnings to start with. They have very low uh, taxation, very low social expenditure, and that they still do well uh, because they start off with the smaller earnings differences. So we say it doesn't matter how you get your greater equality, whether through taxes and benefits or whether through smaller differences to start with. Uh, I think uh, the more fundamental way of doing it is uh, through uh, by reducing the income differences to start with. And I think in many ways the bonus culture only happened because um, people at the top felt they didn't have to answer to anyone. Um, they didn't have to account to anyone. They could do what they liked. Uh, and it, it shows a sort of um, a total lack of concern for anyone else. Uh, you know, often giving themselves these bonuses while laying off other people or opposing page, wage rises. And I think we need to uh, develop all forms of economic democracy, you know, whether it's little things like an employee representatives on the board, or whether it's um, mutuals, friendly societies, employee-owned companies, cooperatives, either producer or consumer cooperatives. All those things seem to constrain top incomes, make the relationship between uh, uh, top and bottom in companies smaller. Uh, they also seem to do better ethically in environmental issues and so on. And indeed, you know, I think as consumers we should be taking our custom towards those kind of, of companies, the more democratic ones, the ones with the small income differences. You know, it's, a, it's a, an ethically superior way of, of doing things.